morning, people. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood, don't you think? It looks like somebody's in a good mood. To what do we owe this heightened state of glee? Five little words can sum up my delectation. Mini frosted caramel bunt cake. Mm. Those aren't the five words I would have guessed. It looks like he said mini frosted caramel bunt cake. He did. Is that from the little place on the corner? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've been craving one of those. They're spectacular. And I have been waiting weeks for them to make them again. And this morning, I got the last one. I will not be sharing. I'm sure you all understand. Mm. That goes for you, too, my little four-legged scavenger friend. Mm. Miles, you don't have to be mean. Even nonsensical badgering cannot spoil the enjoyment I'm about to experience from this delectable taste treat. Stop right there, Miles. Do you have any idea the number of fat grams in that thing? Arlene, you're the on-site nurse, not the nutrition police. And do I look like someone who needs to watch his fat grams? I'm here to save your life, Miles, not to make it miserable. So far, you're failing utterly. You might want to read this before you eat that ticking time bomb. The results from your blood work from your physical. Your cholesterol's 282. 282. Everyone, stand back. He could blow at any moment. If you drop before you eat that, can I have it? He has high cholesterol, 282. 282? That's really high. Yeah, I got that. But what is my good cholesterol as opposed to my bad cholesterol? Hmm? If this were a battle of the little bighorn, your good cholesterol would be General Custer. <laughs> Agent Manning, your cholesterol is a very impressive 156. Hmm. I wonder if there's such a thing as having cholesterol that's um, too low. I accept this only as a friend with your best interests in mind. Here, a dietary regimen to lower your cholesterol. Best to try to reduce it naturally, if possible. How can such a perfectly good day go so bad so quickly? Sir Thomas. Jack, you may want to see this. This is Sci-Fi Guy. I emailed you to warn you about a fire that was going to happen at Southtown SUV. Why didn't you warn them? I did get the email, and we did warn them. We told them they should take the threat seriously. They obviously didn't listen. Turn on your TV to Channel 6, Tara. The downtown SUV dealership was badly damaged. What can you tell us about this? I've said all I'm going to say. Next time, take me seriously. Firefighters are still in the I guess if he calls back, we should take the call. See the seven wonders That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops from knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes Who I am I have a Credit for the fire has been claimed by an environmental group called EEP, Earth Emancipation Project. I'm not familiar with them. Must be new kids on the block. They've just recently come onto our radar. Oh, here's a twist for you. As well as burning a bunch of SUVs, they also stole one. What's that about? I hate them, but they are kind of cool, so maybe I'll keep one for myself. 
Well, we don't have much information on them, but what we do have makes them look to be more militant than your everyday garden variety eco-terrorist group. They appear to be very aggressive and take themselves very seriously. As with most of these organizations, they don't want us to be able to track them. So they list no central location, no hierarchy, no identifiable leadership. Its communiques and website are managed by supporters without any clear links to EEP crimes. The call telling us about the SGB fire was traced to the residents of Richard P. and Deborah K. Jenfold in Alexandria. Do we have anything on them? No, no record of any kind. The best we can guess is it's either somebody who doesn't like eco-terrorist groups or somebody who is a supporter of the cause but doesn't approve of the violence. The part that doesn't compute is why our informant was so meticulous in going out of his or her way to keep us from tracing his or her emails. Bounced them all over the world before they finally got to us. Job very well done, too. We still haven't been able to unravel that trail yet. Why go through all the trouble, then make a phone call we could easily trace? Exactly. Well, why don't we ask him or her? I think we can eliminate the EEP sympathizer idea. It could be a disenchanted kid, doesn't like what mom and dad drives. Could fit the profile. So, what's our approach, friend or foe? Let's just play it as it comes. It's part of the job that keeps it exciting. Look, we go to the Presbyterian Church. We're very happy with it. We're not looking for a new religion. We're with the FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. FBI? Well, we're big pro-law enforcement people. Come on in. I wasn't expecting company. We only just got home. Um, can we offer you some coffee or something? I made muffins this morning. We could pop them in the microwave. No, oh, thank you, Mr. Jensvold. We just wanted to ask if uh, either of you called the FBI from this residence at about 9 o'clock this morning. No, we were both at work already. Are either one of you familiar with an organization called the Earth Emancipation Project, EEP? No. Do you happen to have a son or daughter? We have a son. Is he here? Yes. Uh, could you ask him to come join us? Uh, sure. Billy, can you come here, son? We've got company. He'll be thrilled to meet real FBI agents. Nice dog. You can pet him if you'd like. I don't think Billy is the one who caught him. Lock's been cut. These are the telephone lines for all the phones in the neighborhood. So, whoever called me probably cut the lock and tapped into the Judge Forrest telephone line from here. Who would have the access and knowledge to do this? A technician for a telephone company. But a telephone technician wouldn't have to cut the lock. He might if this isn't his territory. Or it could just be a guy who knows how to use a linesman's rig to tap into a phone line. Could have gotten one at any big home improvement store. Tara, I need you to check with all the superstores in the area. See if there's a way of tracing the sale of linesman rigs. Yeah, if somebody there will know what that is. We should also do background checks on all the local phone company field technicians. Yeah, I know those are both big nets, but that's all we've got to go on right now. That's if you don't count the five-year-old Jensvold boy. Uh, never mind, I'm sure somebody will explain it to you later. You buy stock in a fruit farm? No. I have decided to meet this high cholesterol problem head on. First step is to get some decent snacks in this place. Hey. Garlic? Nothing better for the heart, my friend. Yeah, but you can buy garlic pills, Miles. You don't have to eat raw garlic. Why use an artificial substitute when you can have the real deal? Hope you got a bottle of Listerine to go with that. <coughs> Feel free to help yourselves. I checked with several home improvement stores, and they don't keep the kind of detailed information you're looking for. I also ran the check on all the telephone technicians in Alexandria against indices. 
Only one that had anything interesting was this one. Lenny Mancuso, he came up in the FBI database because he has an arrest record and is currently on parole. It doesn't exactly scream eco-terrorism, but at least he can go across the street without asking his mom's permission. Miles D, got a job for you. Who is it? FBI, could you come to the door, please? Yeah, uh... Just a minute. Is it just me, or was that lacking in conviction? Sounds a bit tentative. Perhaps I'll just mosey around that. Yeah. That would be him going out the back door with conviction! I have a gun, and I'm not afraid to use it! That usually works. Did you reference, pal? When the FBI is at your door, it's never a good idea to run. I think I found why you ran. This is only one of many. And here, all we wanted to do was talk to you. And if you hadn't a run, we wouldn't be able to get into your house without your permission. Some days just stink, don't they? What's that smell? That's not a smell. It's a garlic lace stench, and it's courtesy of Miles. Garlic helps lower cholesterol. Well, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to ingest it, not bathe in it. <sighs> oh, you're overreacting. I haven't even ingested any garlic yet today. It's embedded in your pores. That's the thing about garlic. It becomes your essence. So you may live longer, but you're going to stink the whole time. I'm not sure the trade-off's worth it. Hey, listen up, everybody. Miles D, good job with Lenny Mancuso yesterday. Unfortunately, he's not the guy we're looking for. But it's always good to get another drug dealer off the street. Not to mention the exercise you got. Chasing him down might have lowered your cholesterol a few points. And on the eco-terrorist emailer slash caller front, Tara, you got some news? We bounced all around the world to Sci-Fi's email stops and ended up right back here at George Washington University. Student named Joel Finch. Anybody want to take a stroll with me down academic memory lane? That's OK, Miles. We got this one. Joel Finch? No, I'm, I'm his roommate, Scott. Who are you? FBI. You know where Joel is? Uh, he's probably on his way home from class. Uh, he should be here any minute. OK, if we wait? Yeah, I guess. So uh, what's this all about? We'd just like to ask him a few questions. Can you uh, be a little more specific than that? I mean, it's not every day that the FBI shows up at our door. You a uh, computer science major? No, no, th those are Joel's. Um, is Joel in some kind of trouble? No, we were just hoping that he could help us out with something. Have you and Joel been roommates very long? No, 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 I just moved in this semester. He lived alone before that. I said he needed help with the rent. Um, actually, uh, you know what? I. Got to go to class pretty soon, so uh, I could get Joel to call you back if. Is this Joel's room? Yeah. Take a look. Whatever we see from here, we can use. But if we go in without permission or a warrant, we lose it all. It's the linesman's rig on the desk. Look at the bulletin board. EEP propaganda. Newspaper clippings from yesterday's fire. Actually, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Um, you know, he'll be here any minute, so... What are you doing? That's my room. Who are you? I'm Joel Finch. Who are you? I emailed the FBI because I had information. The Earth Emancipation Project was going to set a SUV dealership on fire. How'd you get that information? I made it my business to get it. Because I don't want someone else to get hurt. Then when I saw the fire on TV, I 
figured you guys didn't take me seriously. So I called. You said you don't want someone else to get hurt. What do you mean? It was 12 years ago. An earlier incarnation of EEP did this to me. Mind telling us how it happened? I was 11 years old. My mom and I were living in this apartment building next to a construction site. One night, somebody set some of the construction vehicles on fire. There was an explosion, and the fire spread to our building. When I got older, I wanted to know why. It was never solved, and no one was ever charged. But you think it was echo terrorists? I know it was. I've done my own investigation. I've been doing it for years. Eco-terrorism groups are usually more than happy to take credit for what they do. I'm not the kind of publicity that furthers their cause. That and the fact that my mother died trying to get me out. The next time I complain about having a bad day, you have permission to slap me. I'm not getting a lot of what you're saying. I'm having a hard time reading his lips. I'll get you a transcript. A couple years ago, I decided I wanted to see the place where it happened. I saw for the first time what they'd been building on that construction site. It's a drug research facility that uses animals for testing. I started researching echo terrorist groups in the area. I found that there had been other similar fires started around that time by a group that was more than happy to claim responsibility. Members from that group are the ones that most recently started up EEP, Earth Emancipation Project. Why were you so secretive? Why don't you just come forward and give us the information? I have no intention of becoming an anti-eco-terrorism poster boy. I don't want my face on newspapers and on TV. The last thing I need is a whole lot of people feeling sorry for me. I thought I could feed you the information and you could catch them. Guess I overestimated you. We don't want anyone else to go through what you had to go through either. So we're gonna need your help. With you, Levi, whatever that smell is, I think I prefer the garlic. I thought that was sardines. I remember it when I was a kid, and my dad used to eat them with crackers. Don't tell us, good for the cholesterol. Eating fish several times a week is one of the best things you can do for your body in so many ways. Improving your social standing is not going to be one of them. <laughs> Mark my words omega 3 polyunsaturated fatty acids are the wave of the future. Makes the blood more slippery, less likely to clot. Huh. Care to jump on the bandwagon while there's still room? Thanks, but uh, we'll take our chances. Okay, let's catch everybody up. Uh, first of all, Joel is going to be working with us. He seems to have developed a close internet relationship with someone called Dodger from Inside EEP. As far as Dodger knows, Joel is a sympathizer who's looking to play a bigger role in helping EEP reach its goal of taking eco-terrorism to a new accelerated level. According to various sources, the eco-chatter out there says they've already got some things in the planning stages. Our job is to keep them from getting past the planning stages. We know anything about this Dodger guy? It's not a guy. It's a Sheila. She's the one who first told Joel that uh, EEP was going to set fire to an SUV dealership. She's from DC, but she and Joel have never met in person. So Sparky is going to assume Joel's persona and go undercover as sci-fi guy. First order of business is to arrange a meet and greet with Jack as Joel and Dodger. I'm really from Pennsylvania, Allentown area, but I told Dodger I was from Kansas. I wanted her to think that there was enough distance between us that it wouldn't be likely we'd ever meet face to face. I think I'm kind of a country hick. I didn't catch that. Sorry, I have kind of a hard time reading your lips. 
Dodger thinks he's a bit of a country hick. Then Jack is perfect casting. <laughs> Funny. You have ears, but you can't hear. I don't, but I can. Well, now that we've bridged the communication gap, back to what we need to know about Dodger. Um, how'd you first come in contact with it? I was monitoring the EEP website, looking for someone I might target to be my way in. I'd read her comments, got the impression that she wasn't as hardcore as some of them. So I emailed her, pretending to be interested in learning more about EEP. We hit it off right away. You'd be surprised at how much information a woman will give you when she feels like she's being listened to. Uh, the way to get a woman interested in you is to listen to her. He's very smart. Dodger is a spoiled little rich girl. Daddy's money. Never worked a day in her life. It's probably used to nobody ever taking her seriously. Daddy's money. And EEP exploits her for her money. EEP takes advantage. She's not the one that holds a torch. She just buys the gasoline. So what's your relationship with her? Let's just say she's gonna be as interested in you as a woman can be. And when she sees you, I imagine she's gonna be flying dangerously close to cloud nine. You're a soccer player, huh? Me too. Wow, you're good. Thanks. A lot of practice. Can you teach me and my friends how to do that? Are we done here? For now. Okay. Cool. He's pretty amazing. Yeah. Smart, funny, charming. Great attitude about life. Reminds me of someone I know. Aren't you gonna ask me who? Well, I think I know who you mean. Oh, you thought I meant you. I was talking about Levi. Arlene? Is there such a thing as being allergic to sardines? I don't know. I've heard of people being allergic to shellfish, which I would never eat because it's bad for cholesterol, but I've never heard that about sardines. Well, I suppose it's possible to develop an allergy to almost anything. What's that smell? Combination of garlic and sardines. I can give you a salve to put on to help with the itch. For the smell, you might want to try a stronger cologne. Hopefully it won't set off some kind of chemical reaction. I'll take the salve, but on a larger scale, I've read that cholesterol levels can be a bit fluid and can vary from test to test, so perhaps as long as I'm here, I should have mine checked again. I have been rigidly following my diet. It's only been a few days. It's not long enough to have made any difference. Darling, please. This is no way to live, and I am ready to go directly to the cholesterol-reducing drugs. But before I do that, I might as well get it checked one more time to see whether or not this torture I've been going through has reaped any results whatsoever. I suppose I can if you want. But can you stand over here? Downwind. Oh, very funny. Actually, I'm not being funny. The smell's starting to make me feel a bit faint. What's going on? Tara is pretending to be Joel in instant messaging Dodge. Tell her it's boring. That's what I always tell her. Tell her you've got a surprise, you're coming to DC and you want to get together.
You've obviously made a good impression. I look good on paper. It's meeting people face to face that sometimes gets a little dicey. But this time it'll be different. Uh, Tara, tell her you'll email her later with the when and where. And sign off, keep the fires burning. That's the way I always sign off. Uh, what happened? Hmm? Oh, minor allergy, nothing serious. What's everyone doing for lunch? Uh, there's a new place I thought we might try, the uh, Tofu Hut. Did he say Tofu Hut? He, he did, and I think he was serious. Who could make a name like that up? Do you want to go or not? It sounds very healthy. I think we'll stick with our own plans. We admire your resolve, Miles. Uh, tell us how it is. Although we think we already know. Live one headed your way, Jack. Let me just say, if this is her, the Hudson luck is held up yet again. Mm. Thanks for the warning. I'll try not to look too anxious. Be her. Joel? Uh, yeah. Dodger. Yeah. I knew it was you. You look exactly the way I pictured you. Well, I had a picture in my mind of what you might look like, but uh, my imagination didn't come close to doing you justice. You're even sweeter in person than you are online. I want to join EEP. I believe so strongly in what you guys are doing, and I want to help. It must be a great feeling to strike out at the people who profit from the destruction and exploitation of our planet. That fire at the SUV dealership must have been really great feeling to be a part of it. You have no idea. Don't tell me you were actually there. Not exactly. But I did put up the money for it, so. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and we've got more things coming up. Who's in charge of the whole thing? Look, I, I really can't say. But I'll put in the good word for you. Well, it, it, it's your first night here, so why don't I take you out and show you some of the sights? Huh? No, that won't be necessary. I've already seen them. I'm not Joel, and you and I are going to be busy talking about how you financed EEP's latest act of domestic terrorism. Don't move. We'll do the honors. Uh, FBI, what's your hurry? You can't stop us from doing what's right. The Earth Emancipation Project will not be stopped. This is a serious situation that you're in. Dodger. And trust me when I tell you, your daddy's money's not going to get you out of this one. In the park, you said you financed the SUV fire and indicated you were a member of EEP, all of which we have on tape, I might add. You know, you should be so concerned about protecting this country against its real enemies instead of those that are only trying to save it. You know, if I am to be the martyr of such a worthy cause, well, then so be it. I'll do it proudly. What about the innocent people who get hurt along the way? Are you proud of that, too? Innocent people don't get harmed, only those that are part of the problem. I know you think what you're doing is noble and that only good can come out of it. But I think you need to meet someone. You're up, Slugger. Make it a good or bad. Hello, Dodger. It's me, Joel. I'm the real sci-fi guy. Not quite the way you had me pictured, I know. I heard you talking to Jack. But you see, I didn't always look like this. This is what happened when one of those harmless fires that are only meant to punish the evil capitalists got out of control. 
You can look away. That's not going to change it. It's me, Joel. Keep the fires burning. Finch. And people in your organization did this to me. We know what happened to Joa would not have ever been your intention. And even though you personally were not responsible for his injuries, you need to know this can be the consequence of your actions. I'm so sorry. What do you want me to do? Tell us everything you know, starting with who's calling the shots. Um, I only know Miss Fagan. I don't know if that's his real name or just his email name, but he's the one. He's been doing this a long time. He came from some place in Pennsylvania, I'm not sure where. He stole the SUV because he wants to make a major political statement. What is he planning? He wants to blow up a chemical plant. The answers to the questions when and where would be good about now. I can't answer either of those. But judging by the level of activity, I'd say sometime in the next few days. Charles Fagan first came to the Bureau's attention when he was caught spiking trees back in the early 90s. He came back to our attention a few years later when he was under suspicion for some fires at car dealerships and a couple of housing projects in what some people thought should be protected areas but there wasn't enough evidence to bring charges. Dodger figures he's in the D.C. area because he made a charge to one of the credit cards a few days ago. We should put an APB out on him right away. How many chemical plants can there be? Try upwards of 15,000 facilities across the country that produce or store deadly chemicals. You did say 15,000, didn't you? And a little side note, there are no federal regulations when it comes to security at these plants, so some of them are pretty lax. Because we believe Fagan's in the vicinity, we've compiled a list of about 30 chemical plants in the tri-state area. Uh, Joel, any of those have any significance as far as you know? No. Well, go back over them one by one and see if it matches anything you've seen online. And we need to alert all local law enforcement agencies, have them contact all the chemical plants in their area and tell them to beef up security. In the meantime, get everybody out there shaking those trees. See if anything falls out. Everybody knows what to do. We're gonna get them. Luce, where's our food? My stomach is talking to me in an extremely belligerent tone of voice. Yeah, that's a good question. Joel should have been back a long time ago. Joel went to get the food? Yeah, he said he needed some air anyway, so he volunteered. Jack, I think you better see this. Hampstead Chemical has a plant just into Virginia about 15 minutes from here. I think it's the place they'll hit. Reports I'm looking at say Hampstead's got a pretty clean record. But Hampstead was recently purchased by Shearing Chemical, a known adversary of the eco-terrorists. We put out an email from Dodger inquiring, in the proper language of course, about the location of the next strike. Of course, you can't ask directly, that's not the way EEP works. But we've gotten responses back that suggest several different locations. Cheering is a name that comes up more than once. And then I got this email, which doesn't give a location, but mentions the date as today. Joel's not picking up his phone, and I just checked with the deli. He hasn't picked up the food either. Joel believes Bagan was the one who started the fire he was burned in. You don't think that he might try something on his own? 
Lucy, call the local police, tell them what's going on. Get a hold of somebody at that plant, find out what kind of chemicals we're talking about, and find out what kind of security they got in place. just crashed the entrance of Shearing. Local police are mobilizing, but they're not there yet. On-site security is very light. What about the chemicals at the plant? There are several, but the worst is anhydrous ammonia. Searches at the wet parts of your body, goes for your eyes and your throat, rips out your lungs and blinds you. What about collateral damage? It's in a heavily populated area. If they blow the place up, we're talking Potentially hundreds of thousands of people could be exposed. We're about five minutes away. Never a dull moment, eh, Sparky? I got a call saying you were coming. Any other law enforcement here yet? No, you're the first. What happened? Some maniac in an SUV plowed through the front gate there. He didn't even try to slow down. Where is he now? He's over in sector seven there. The guy got out of the car after about two minutes. He starts to run about 10 paces, and this guy in a baseball hat with a rifle stops him down. Now, this is what Harlan told me anyway, okay? He's the other guard on duty. Where's Harlan now? He's over on the other side of the plant there. What's going on? Fagan's in there, and uh, maybe Joel. Okay, pull everybody back except for SWAT to a safe perimeter. All right. We're Sector 7. Sector 7, and it's wired. Looks like a cell phone detonator. Get the bomb squad in here now. Uh, you two stay nearby. Get to the bomb squad. We'll let you know where we are. Still. Let's did this to me. I want to hear it from you. I didn't mean to. Now you think the answer is to kill me. I don't want to kill you. I just want to watch you burn for a while. I want you to live and feel the pain. I want you to remember this moment every day of your life. Every time someone looks at you. Don't do it, Joel. You don't want to do this. What good can it do? Arresting him is too easy, Jack. He needs to suffer. It won't be OK until he suffers. He's taking too much from you already, Joel. Don't let him take any more. That's what you'd be doing. Can't take your spirit, can't take your soul, not unless you let him. Forgiveness is for the one who forgives. It's not about him anymore. Jack, snipers are in position. They have him in their sights. No, Tara, call him off. I'm asking you one more time, Joel. Don't let him do this to you. You got too much to live for. Too much to teach people. 
taught me. I'll use this. Hands on your head. Pick it up slow. Come on, It's going to be okay. Tell her we'll figure out a way to communicate. Uh, he said we'll figure out a way to communicate. We will. And I'm glad you're all right. And I know God will use you in powerful ways. Who is this? <laughs> I understand it'll also work with your Blackberry. It was his idea. He figured it out. He's a man of his word. He is at that? Uh, now, what's the answer to the question? What do you call a blonde with an IQ of 200? Levi. <laughs> and a very cheerful good morning to you, Joel. Good morning. Everybody, have you ever seen such a beautiful day? Mr. Glum has turned rather chipper. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. The Miles you have all come to know and love. I wasn't aware there was a Miles we ever knew and loved. You can say whatever you like. You cannot spoil my mood today. I am equally happy, Miles, that you were kind enough to introduce me to these tasty little morsels. And did you know that the Corner Coffee Shop has them almost daily now? Hey! Mmm. And they are just as delicious as I remember. Thought you weren't eating those. That was yesterday. Today I'm eating whatever I want. And what I want right now is one of these. So what? You've just given up? You can let the time bomb explode where it may? No. As it turns out, in this case, there is no time bomb. I've just been to see Arlene and my cholesterol has miraculously gone down to 151. I'm impressed. It's even lower than mine. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. How does your cholesterol drop over 100 points in less than a week? Yeah! It doesn't. You see, when I had mine checked again a couple of days ago and it came out at 151, Arlene got suspicious. And so she investigated and discovered that she had placed my name on your blood sample the first time she sent them in. What? But that means that... Everybody stand back, he could blow at any moment. It seems you have a bit of a cholesterol problem, my friend, which is why I did you the favor of eating this tasty little morsel. Oh. I know it's gonna be hard, but try to enjoy the rest of your life. Oh, and uh, one small word of advice. Never mix garlic and sardines. Mm, I can vouch for that. I had to get new curtains for my office. With my condolences. What's this? Take out many for the tofu hut. 